think they've been real good. Had a lot of people come up to us, tell us that they think it's really cool and that they like the lyrics and stuff, which is a surprise because like, they're the hardest part. So I wasn't really sure whether people would care or like, you know, be into it. But yeah, people people saying it's speaking to them. So that's all, that's all that counts, isn't it? Yeah, only being positive reviews. Yeah, literally only positive, it's crazy. Oh no! I might need if you can't. So, some Italian guy told me that the drums sounded really bad and that the guitars sounded terrible. And I was like, the only thing that sounds good on the record are the drums, vocals, and guitar. So what's he slagging off? Everything sounds good. He needs to calm down. Yeah, I can't really think of anything that crazy. Hmm. I don't know. If anyone wants to tell us something crazy about it, then email us <laughs> at higherpowercrazycomments at gmail.com. <laughs> Maybe once before a tour to get hyped and relearn the songs. Yeah. And then when we were recording the LP, I think I listened to it like every day, just thinking, is this good? And then people think it's good, so I guess it paid off. Yeah, again, listen to it like a couple of weeks before tour, remember what to play and when. <laughs> yeah. And then when we record, listen to it every day, like he said. Yeah, you listen to it enough when you're recording it, like. <laughs> Sometimes I think that, I think, yeah, they prefer American bands, like, definitely, because I think that's, like, real familiar to them. And then for, like, a UK band to kind of come and be on the same level as an American band is definitely, definitely hard. But, like, I think... Yeah, I think you just got to persevere and keep playing. I think it's about all about who you know. That's hardcore politics. Ah. Definitely who you know, whether you got cool merch. Like, think about it, Higher Power, the demo. I couldn't sing. I didn't know what was going on. We just had cool merch. People wore it a lot. And now here we are at Punk Rock Holiday, Fucking swimming up. in the water. Like, but yeah, no, I think it's definitely sometimes it can be about who you know, yeah. and then also sometimes like bands that you know are kind of underrated in their time, like they're always picked up a lot later on, and it's a shame. But I think that's just the way music is nowadays. And so there's a lot of good bands out there that aren't really like pushing themselves a lot, yeah. which is frustrating when you see a band that's super cool, but. You know, they're all like, they don't tour a lot and push it as hard as they could. But then there's bands who do nothing and get big. Yeah. Like, I can't think of an example right now, but it's bands who do like fuck all and just like walk into doing things. <laughs> I can't think of anyone right now, but it definitely happens. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah, that, that was so lit. Like, that was our first tour as High Power. Like, I'd been before. Yeah, that was literally our first show out of the UK. Like, we were playing, we released a demo, and then me and Max were playing in another band, Fade, and we were at a show, and the demo had been out, what, like two months or something? And we played four shows, and we got offered United Blood, and we were just like, this is crazy. Are we ready? It was a tour, it was like a week, and then it was like a week leading up to United Blood through the East Coast, down to Florida, back up to Richmond to play United Blood. And I literally, I didn't expect anything you know, when we played, I didn't think people would know us or people would care. I was just like super stoked to be in the US playing shows with like Angel Dust and Red Death and stuff. You know, it was all a bit over my head, but to actually play and have people mosh was like insane. Like it was, it was definitely like my expectations of it weren't, you know, for our sets weren't a lot. We were just stoked to be there. And then when people were moshing, it just made it like 10 times better. And the first show, the first show we played outside of the UK in New York, like it was, I don't know, it was mental. <laughs> Yeah, there was like, I don't know, like New York hardcore, like heroes watching us and it was just fucking mad. The first show out of UK. And just like, every, no one, like, no, I don't think anyone played very, we probably played terribly that night. Like, I felt like it, I was so scared because I looked to like, you're right, and it's like, is it Jorge from Order? George, Jorge, whatever. And it's fucking, uh, Joe Songo from Outburst. I can't remember who else is there, but it's, I don't know, very scary, but 
amazing, amazing time. Oh, oh. Deftones. Deftones, Rage Against the Machine, Alice in Chains with Lane Staley back from the dead. Um, uh, Alpha Omega Aero Chrome Mags. Yeah, Alpha Omega Chrome Mags. In it. In it. <laughs> Fuck, oh, it's, oh, a, it's a hard tool. one. Machine head, like, uh, yeah. Machine head. I'm not really fussed about what era, because I fucking love machine head. Chromax Alpha Omega era, because it suits our sound more. Leeway was the way. Oh, and Leeway. Yeah, Leeway Chromax machine head. Yeah. Oosh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was fucking... Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that, that's it. Uh, I think, no, nah, I've been talking about this because I work in a tattoo shop and everyone's an artist. And basic, this is what I feel like a lot of artists feel is that, like, you know, you're an artist and you literally put everything out there to people. Like, you put yourself on the line, you put your emotions out there. And think about Linkin Park, we're a very big band, if this is what this question is about. They're a very big band, you know, Soundgarden, very big band. You know, they had their day. And then I feel like, you know, the more you put yourself out there, the more you're open to people slating you, you know, taking the piss out of you. And, you know, they've had their heyday. They're coming down from it. Obviously, there's like a, you know, people ain't taking it so seriously. I think that's got to take its toll on you when, when your whole life is your art and you put yourself out there so much for people to, you know, kind of shoot you down a lot. It can definitely be hard and it can definitely feel like you're not, Put, you're not communicating with the world so well anymore and you know I think that's why a lot of artists struggle because they put themselves on the line so much only to be shot down and you can, it can literally make you feel like worthless it can make you feel lost in the world when people aren't receiving your art so well anymore so yeah I think that I don't I think that's a big factor in it as an artist definitely but I don't know who am I to say Oh, to cover us? Yes. Oh. Oh. I don't know. Lee <laughs> leeway to cover us. So, <laughs> and then they can just claim that it was a new Leeway song because we ripped them off anyway. So. Yeah, I don't know. If anyone covered my band, if anyone covered my band, it'd be weird as fuck. I don't know. Metallica. Yeah. Yeah, Metallica, that'd be sick. Imagine. <laughs> maybe someone who can actually sing the songs. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe <laughs> Lars Ulrich doesn't play drums, though. So. Uh... Oh, yeah, we're oh, fucking he... mosh hard. Yeah, we mosh hard, but Ethan grew up and now he's scared of the mosh pit. Yeah. Like, his Ethan. name's Pit Beefen. But he don't mosh. He says he says he does, and he, but he's grown up now. He stopped moshing. Yeah, we used to be for the moshers, at, by the moshers, and then Ethan thinks he's real cool because he's in a rock band. So he stopped moshing so hard, and now he just floats yeah, around in the water. But yeah, I say we're we're fucking sick of moshing. We love it. That's what hardcore's about. The mosh yeah, pit. Moshing's sick. And that's all we want to do: create music for people to mosh to.